Hi friends, this is Danielle. Thanks for joining me tonight. So I've never gone live before, but I decided to go live tonight to just um, have you guys join me on a Bible study. And so tonight, I'm actually um, in the book of Romans, chapter 13. And I'm just going to read this with you guys. And then from there, we'll go ahead and discuss maybe in the comments a little bit. So we're going to read in Romans chapter 13. Uh, the topic is respect for authority. So I'll go ahead and give it a couple minutes to see if anybody would like to join us in the Bible study tonight. Um, again, we're going in Romans chapter 13. And the topic is respect for authority. So um, first, I'd like to go ahead and pray before I do any Bible study. I like to just pray and ask God for wisdom. So I'll go ahead and bow my head now. If you'd like to join me, you can. Um, dear God, first of all, thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. And thank you for the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Um, I ask for your wisdom tonight. I ask for you to uh, reveal things to me in your word, and I thank you for your word, Lord, and for um, just uh, giving me more understanding through your word, and I pray for a renewed mind, and I pray these in Jesus' name, amen. All right, and so if you have your Bibles, you can go with me and turn to Romans 13. Let's see here. We're in Romans 13. Or you can go on your phone. A lot of phones have Bible app. Um, I'll go ahead and get started here. So it says, everyone must submit to governing authorities for all authority comes from God. And those in position of authority have been placed there by God. So anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted and they will be punished. For the authorities do not strike fear in people who are doing right, but in those who are doing wrong. Would you like to live without fear of the authorities? Do what is right, and they will honor you. The authorities are God's servants, sent for your good. But if you're doing wrong, of course you should be afraid, for they have the power to punish you. They are God's servants, sent for the very purpose of punishing those who do what is wrong. So you must be sub so you must submit to them, not only to avoid punishment, but also to keep a clear conscience. So there's a lot of information there in just that first paragraph. And uh, that's one thing I love about the Bible is it's so jam-packed full of wisdom. We could sit here all night and discuss just that paragraph, but I'm going to continue. And again, we're in uh, Romans chapter 13, if anybody would like to join us in Bible study. So I'm going to start in verse six. It says, pay your taxes too, for these same reasons, for government workers need to be paid. They are serving God in what they do. Give to everyone what you owe them. Pay your taxes and government fees to those who collect them and give respect and honor to those who are in authority. All right, now owe nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love one another. If you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of God's law. For the commandments say, you must not commit adultery, you must not murder, you must not steal, you must not covet. These and other such commandments are summed up in this one commandment. Okay, so love your neighbor as you love yourself. <laughs> That's a good one. Love does no wrong to others. So love fulfills the requirements of God's law. This is all the more urgent for you to know how late it is. Time is running out. Wake up, for our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. 
The night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. So remove your dark deeds like dirty clothes and put on the shining armor of right living. Because we belong to the day, we must live decent lives for all to see. Don't participate in the darkness of wild parties and drunkenness or in sexual promiscuity and immoral living or in quarreling and in jealousy. Instead, close yourselves with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and don't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires. Oh, thanks for joining me, Callista. So Callista said, um, good riddance, dear. I draw insight from your sermon, Danny. And he also said Matthew 21, 22. So I'm going to go ahead and jump to Matthew and read that so we can see what it says. And thanks for joining me if you guys are on this Bible study. If not, you can watch the replay later, but it's going to be hopefully helpful for someone. Okay, so Matthew 21, 22 says, um, you can pray for anything, and if you have faith, you will receive it. And that is so true. So God is um, a really wonderful father. He loves to give good gifts to his children. And a lot of times he says we don't have something because we don't ask for it. And so he does tell us to ask, seek, and knock. Um, he also says that uh, a lot of times we don't have because we didn't ask for it. So make sure to just ask if you need anything to God and he'll be happy to give it to you. But you have to have faith because faith is what pleases God. Now, what is faith? Faith is the hope for the things that we don't see. So I might have faith that. Uh, Jesus is coming back soon. And I do. I have faith in that. So what does that mean? I'm going to behave and act in a way that shows that I believe Jesus is coming back soon. And that kind of ties into Romans 13, where it says that we should live in a way um, where our, our good works can be seen to the world. So if I proclaim to believe in Christ, then I need to live in a way that shows that I believe in Jesus Christ. Thank you for that um, verse suggestion, Callistus. I appreciate it. So if we go back to chapter 13, it says everyone must submit to governing authorities. So good question to start here. I like to break down these verses. So one thing I like to do is get a notebook and a pen. <laughs> so that way, if there's any questions or any insight that I get from what I'm reading, I can just write it down. So um, everyone must sub submit to authority. And it's the governing authority. So right now there's a lot of uh, talk about the election and the president and not everybody agrees with our president, um, but according to God's word, we must submit to the governing authorities. And the next sentence says, for all authority comes from God and those in position of authority have been placed there by God. So whether we like our authorities or not, um, the Bible states that it's placed there by God. So. I see someone commented, Trump is a loser, and so are you. And I understand how you feel, but if you're a believer and you pro profess to believe God's word, then you believe that he chose the people in positions of authority. And it says, anyone who rebels against authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and they will be punished. So... I would suggest to write that down, uh, CL Nation, is even though you might not like Trump, if you rebel against his authority, because God instituted that authority over you, if you rebel against it, you will be punished. So that is just a good warning. 
if you've done it before, um, it's okay. I'm sure we all have at one point or another, but just repent and ask God to forgive you. All right. And then the next thing it said was, um, for those authorities, do not strike fear in people who are doing right, but in those who are doing wrong. So another example of an authority is like um, the police. So if you're not breaking any laws, usually like if you're, you know, let's say you're just uh, living a pure and holy lifestyle, most likely you're not going to be in any trouble for that. Um, <laughs> so that's what I would just say about that is for those authorities do not strike fear in people who are doing right, but in those who are doing wrong. Would you like to live without fear of the authorities? Then do what is right and they will honor you. The authorities are God's servants sent for your good. But if you're doing wrong, of course you should be afraid for they have the power to punish you. They are God's servants sent to the very purpose of punishing those who do what is wrong. So you must submit to them not only to avoid punishment, but also to keep a clear conscience. So a lot of times, if you're living like a double life, your conscience isn't very clear because you're not being transparent. Um, you're keeping something hidden. And so it kind of eats away at you. Um, it makes you feel guilty. It makes you feel kind of paranoid. Uh, it makes you worried about your dirty deeds being exposed. But when you confess those things to God and you ask for forgiveness, he throws those sins into the sea of forgetfulness. So that's something great that you always have a second chance when you have God. Next, it says pay your taxes for these same reasons, for government workers need to be paid. They are serving God in what they do. Give to everyone what you owe them. Pay your taxes and government fees to those who collect them and give respect and honor to those who are in authority. So this is very important. Um, a lot of people don't necessarily give the respect that's uh, deserved to those who are in authority, to those who are government workers, um, but the Bible commands it. So it's something that I highly suggest to make a priority in your own life is to make sure that you're giving respect and honor to those who are in authority. And then um, love fulfills God's requirements. So how do we give that honor and respect? It's by the love in our hearts. If you have any hate in your heart, um, you need to check that at the door, basically. All right. And it says, oh, nothing to anyone except for your obligation to love one another. If you love your neighbor, you will fulfill the requirements of God's law. For the commandments say you must not commit adultery. You must not murder. You must not steal. You must not covet. These and other such commandments are summed up in this one commandment. Love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no wrong to others, so love fulfills the requirements of God's law. So that's important. Um, I've heard a lot of people say you can't love anyone until you love yourself. And, you know, that's somewhat true. And what we see here is God commands that we are to love others as ourself. We're supposed to love ourselves and others. Um, it doesn't matter if we like them or not. It doesn't matter if we agree with them or not. It doesn't matter if we um, even have anything in common at all. We have to love everyone because it's a commandment. And this is all the more urgent for you know how late it is. Time is running out. Wake up for our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. So by that, I believe he's talking about the second coming of Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is coming back very soon. And the time is very urgent. We don't have time to put it off until tomorrow. We have to get it right today. And uh, then it goes on to say, the night is almost gone. The day of salvation will soon be here. 
So remove your dark deeds like dirty clothes and put on the shining armor of right living because we long to the day or we belong today to the day we must live decent lives for all to see. So um, Christians belong to the day. We are children of the light. And uh, what that means is that God shines his glory on us and then through us into the world. He calls Christians the light of the world and we're supposed to be a light and a salt. So we can't put a lid on our light so no one can see it. We have to shine our light so that everyone can see it. And that's why we're called to be bold. We're called to be holy. Um, we're called to be peculiar and set apart for God's use. So we're not going to be like everyone else in the world. That's why the next sentence says, don't participate in the darkness of wild parties and drunkenness or in sexual promiscuity and immoral living or in quarreling and jealousy. And so that definitely um, describes the majority of people in the world nowadays. So in order to live a godly life, you have to sacrifice those fleshly desires and um, instead clothe yourself with the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ and don't let yourself think about ways to indulge your evil desires. So um, that's a really good uh, place to leave off. Um, one thing about God is that he transforms us. And so uh, I'm going to read here <clears throat> that to uh, transform means to change form. It's the English derivative of metamorphosis. In the New Testament, this word is used to describe an inward renewal of our mind through which our inner spirit is changed into the likeness of Christ. Paul told the Roman believers, be transformed by the renewing of your minds. As our Christian life progresses, we should gradually notice that our life and our thought life is being changed um, from Christlessness to Christ likeness. Transformation does not happen overnight. Our regeneration is instantaneous, but our transformation is continuous. We are conformed to Christ's image gradually as we spend time in intimate fellowship with him. So one way you can, uh, one way that you can uh, fellowship with God is by just spending quiet time with him. Um, maybe go in your room, shut the door, just uh, lay down or sit, sit there and just kind of um, spend some quiet time with God. I know I like to spend time in prayer and then it's also important to spend quiet time where you can hear God and also reading his word, um, hearing God's voice. A lot of times you get that from hearing God's word through the Bible. And um, another way that you can have fellowship with God is through fasting. So if you've never done a fast before, um, you can do uh, like fasting from food, you can fast from social media, you could fast from like your morning coffee, and you're doing it with the intention of replacing that time and energy you would have done with something else and spending it with God instead. So um, it's really helped me a lot in my walk with Christ. It's helped to strengthen my inner spirit, man, um, just by spending that quiet time with God every day. I especially like to do it first time, uh, first thing when I wake up and before I go to bed. That way I start my day with God and I end my day with God. And then I try to pray continuously throughout the day. And anytime I get a chance, I'll read a scripture or um, read the Bible. I'll pray or even listen to some uh, praise and worship music. And it really helps my walk with Christ. So I really hope that that helped you guys tonight. I'm glad we got to do a Bible study. Um, but something I want to finish off with is just never pay back evil with more evil. Do things in such a way that everyone can see 
you are honorable. Do all that you can to live in peace with everyone. Dear friends, never take revenge. Leave that to the righteous anger of God. For the scripture says, I will take revenge. I will pay them back, says the Lord. Instead, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they're thirsty, give them something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals of shame on their heads. Do not let evil conquer you, but conquer evil by doing good. So that was really encouraging. And um, thank you guys for joining me tonight. I hope maybe I can do another uh, live video sometime. We can do another Bible study. But God bless you guys. Um, if you have any questions about the Bible or about Jesus Christ, you know, you can always message me and I'll be glad to answer. And um, I'm just so thankful for everybody on my Facebook. Uh, you guys are really wonderful. And I've never gone live before, but thank you for joining me. And I hope you all